Welcome back, everyone. This is um, John Hicksmart. That was our second session of the Open EHR International um, Conference. I'm really pleased to bring back all of the um, presenters um, for the first of today's live um, audience Q&As. Um, so welcome back, James, Michael, Thomas, uh, Marco, Carla, um, and David. Um, and the first question is, is to each of you. Um, so You've given some great snapshots of how we've got a, an emerging ecosystem uh, based on open platforms, open EHR. How far do you think we've come in actually kind of creating a vibrant kind of um, critical mass um, of suppliers? And what remain the main blocks um, to um, open approach? If we can take that in order that you presented. So James, first of all, followed by Michael, and we'll work through um, each of you. Thank you, John. Um, I, I think significant progress has been made. Um, I, you know, we we look at our client base, we look at what the market is asking for uh, in our interactions, and there's definitely a strong desire uh, to do things different, to be innovative, uh, and the open air platform really does provide that opportunity. Um, it still seems the case that from our experience that it's specific challenges rather than overall EHRs which are being asked for with, with the open air. Um, and I think that's because there's a bit of a nervousness around people wanting a complete solution. So the, the challenge of building your own, I, I think, still uh, makes certain people nervous. Uh, there is an amount of risk involved and, and confidence and expertise available uh, to actually build the apps and the ecosystem. Uh, but that said, um, we definitely see that something is growing. Uh, and in terms of bimodal, that offers that, that perfect balance between something that's going to continue to operate and do the day-to-day -day stuff uh, and give you the opportunity to innovate around the outskirts of that. So, yeah, definite progress being made. Thanks, James. Progress being made. Michael, um, same question to you. Yes, I think so. Thank you, John. The... Um situation i think as we see it is that a uh, surprisingly large amount of progress is now being quietly made in the background uh, even amongst the major uh, manufacturers the the industry is pivoting towards much more open attitudes uh, bob wachter's uh, comments about uh, an inbuilt resistance within the us healthcare market to sudden change um, is echoed in, in the speed of response. It's really improving now. And the, uh, the, the shift to fire interoperability and the conceptual ability to handle bulk of clinical data in and out of uh, open air storage, definitely on its way. The critical mass is building. That's great, Michael. Um, Thomas, um, same question to you. Yeah, so um, I would say we are at this stage where the early adopters are pretty much uh, on board with this approach. So the, in line with, uh, you know, the crossing the chasm idea, we are now attacking the mainstream. And of course, here it's more difficult. And uh, James mentioned they want a full solution. And that's actually something that uh, is, is a, an impediment because it's really hard to provide a, new solu a, a full solution with, with something new. But that said... We see this, um, obviously, the postmodern approach where you can augment existing stuff with, uh, with this type of approach and slowly, through uh, some time, move over to the new approach is the safe uh, bet for, for even the, uh, you know, the most conservative uh, um, uh, uh, healthcare systems. And you know they are conservative. I mean, there is no doubt. It is the last industry to use the facts, as I understand it. You know, so... We are, we are faced with a challenge, but the good thing is that uh, the, the whole landscape is shifting. I have never met a customer who says they don't want open data. Never. Thanks, uh, Thomas. Um, Marco, same question. Okay. To put it shortly, I'd like to formulate it uh, in behalf of Pietro Ever that the foundation is now built and it is uh, well in place when we compare that like a building the house. And now the next steps are to globally get that ecosystem work together, have a good governance, and then the interoperability in place. Then we can build a great uh, outcome all together around the open air. But like I said, from our point of view, foundation is there, meaning the first modules other platform is in place. Now it is then the expansion and making that making that to be a live ecosystem to say. 
That's it shortly. Thanks, Marco. Um, Carlo. Yes, I can emphasize what Marco just said. So the, the foundation is in place, but now we can actually get advantage of that foundation and utilize those building blocks in a, in a more wider spectrum. And then we can even evolve the, kind of the end users' gains from that. So nothing more to add, but I'm kind of waiting for us to push that one uh, bit further to actually get it on live and on like really wide spectrum to get all the gains from that. Thanks. Thanks, Colin. And um, David, same question. Thank you, John. So uh, yes, uh, as many have said earlier on during the sessions, uh, uh, customer lock-in has been uh, absolutely a barrier up to now. But uh, uh, as we've said, the key opinion leaders have starting uh, uh, taking apart of these barriers, uh, and uh, many and many more providers are mute, are. Uh, shifting to a patient-centric uh, approach uh, uh, where obviously uh, adoption of the fire and especially open HR is rapidly and rapidly increasing. Uh, we are much of an outsider uh, to the EHR uh, world uh, as uh, uh, an automation solution provider, but uh, we hope and think uh, that we can play our part uh, in driving adoption for the whole ecosystem. Uh -huh. John, if I just may, may add something, which is an observation which people Please. don't realize. Uh, the Nordics market is ar arguably one of the most advanced, and it's quite interesting that all the top three vendors in Norway, Sweden, and Finland are on Open EHR. So Cambio, Dips, and, uh, and Tieto. So that's something to keep in mind. And I think some markets, of course, are moving much faster than others. It's usually the ones that are more mature and have been collecting data for 20, 30 years much, much, uh, in a much uh, better way than, than other markets. That's great. Now let's um, start on some of the questions coming in from um, you, the audience. Um, the first one um, I want to ask is about um, M Health devices and um, citizen facing apps. Um, and the question is um, smart M Health devices all need um, software to operate. Licenses often say not for healthcare use. Why should data originated by the citizen? be blocked from whatever use um, they choose to make of it. Who'd like to pick up on that one? Mm, that's a tough yeah, question, John. Nice. Michael, are you going to take a shot at that one? Would I? Yes. I think that the interesting point there is very possibly around um, a Back, we're back to conservative and and um, uh, and legal concerns uh, by said manufacturers. I suspect that uh, I think it's it's a matter of agreeing that it's the choice of the operator and that the uh, the, the choice of the owner to share their data and that the manufacturers are, if you like, protecting themselves from being sued for providing data. Um, this is an area where I think the legislative cover and the expectation that as citizens we can share the information at our choice as we wish um, is not yet caught up in the legal structures to how we can um, pr protect those who may feel they might be sued. We're, we're not quite mature enough yet in terms of the um, ownership, rights, access. Uh, it, it's, it's another of those areas we need to tidy up to be able to open this up. It's, uh, it's a lack of maturity. That's great. Um, next question um, had come in, um, this one from Michael Mundy. Um, Open EHR seems like a good fit for a lot of um, scenarios, but what are the blockers? Um, for example, do the proprietary systems still have too tight a grip on the market? And, and obviously we heard about this um, from Bob Wachter, um, and you know, as it's commonly said here in the UK, um, turkeys don't tend to vote for Christmas. Um, so that question about blockers um, and, 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 and resistance to um, interoperability in particular. Thomas, I know you've got a few views on this one. Can I um, turn to you first of all? Yes. Uh, so Bob mentioned two impediments. One is the vendors and the other in the US is the uh, health systems themselves, which are not too keen on patients going somewhere else. And I would argue that this is a US uh, or a private healthcare system specific uh, problem. I don't see the NHS fighting for patients. And so this is something that is an advantage in the NHS system where people are actually willing to share and give patients data without uh, thinking about the business side. 
So on the vendor side, uh, you're right, of course. I mean, but it's like that in any disruption, right? So the current vendors are fighting a tooth and nail. And the question is from the patient and the healthcare system side, what do you want? I mean, what is the advantage of having data in a proprietary format? I don't see any. So, you know, we just have to keep pushing and, and demonstrating that it can be done another way. And I think uh, we've seen vendors, uh, Oscar is being an example, the Nordic vendor is an example. It is shifting, it is disrupting. And, and you know, you have to realize uh, again what, what John's, uh, Bob said in the, in the keynote, it is not the center of the universe anymore for a healthcare system. The EHR is not the center of the universe. And when it comes to data, it's going to have less and less data of the totality of data available if you include device data, if you include the other uh, systems from outside of the trust. So, you know, I think it's losing in, in, its, in its relevance in terms of being the one, and one for all. That, that's great. And th can I bring anyone else um, in on this? I'm particularly interested in hearing from uh, Marco and Kale. Um, what is it about the kind of um, Nordics, um, Finland um, in particular, that, that has made that market, um, you know, one of the leaders in, in kind of um, embracing kind of open um, as a philosophy in healthcare. Um, are there any cultural characteristics? Is it a Goldilocks question? Is it the right size? Um, I don't know. What, what are your thoughts, Marco? Uh, that's quite a complex question, but let's take first the easy part and the, in a way, what is the smoothest and easiest part that uh, here the public and private lives in the healthcare side quite closely, hand in hand, and um, how the authorities have guided, like the national archiving, national e-prescriptions. Those are from the history something that we, are, we have learned and taken first steps in the interoperability. That is in a way the foundation from where to build on that sense and then when we look at the challenges, challenging parts that are ahead, that is then coming when the open air is more widely utilized and spread in future, that how the authorities are driving that and what kind of governance model we are able to build, hopefully across the Nordics around this model so that we get then the successful outcome. But that's shortly from my view. And maybe I can fill in a bit like, I see one of the one of the key aspects here is that we have a lot of data and we have been collecting that for so long in the healthcare and and we have seen the challenges when it comes to proprietary data models and when we start to integrate different systems and especially when it comes to the semantic interoperability part in that so we have acknowledged the issue from from like a, from the history and now we need to react on that and also the customers and, and different health risk districts are kind of wishing that everything should be easier. Now we are providing an aspect that how it can be easier. That's great. Um, getting some good questions coming through. Um, next to it, both around kind of um, around sharing and um, having kind of common kind of approaches. Um, first one I'm going to take um, um, and perhaps bring David in on this one is open EHR definitely solves some of the key problems in healthcare. All of the ideas of a common platform shared between different orgs relies on the organization using the same information model. That is a key change for healthcare providers. They always think of themselves as special and want to do their own um, things as they are unique. How do you ensure uh, they're all using the same information model? Are your you vendors using the same information models, uh, brackets, archetypes, so that you can share, interoperate, share data? So if we go to David first, but um, please do kind of come in um, once David's um, responded. Uh, so thank you, thank you, John, and thanks uh, for the audience uh, for this uh, very good question. So uh, interoperability especially inside uh, the lab uh, has always been a nightmare. We have been living this for over 25 years, and uh, the number of different uh, uh, software solutions and data models that have stratified throughout the years is almost countless. Uh, we uh, have found uh, OpenEHR to be uh, our preferred and best uh, solution for uh, uh, actually uh, making a sense of all that uh, stratified mess uh, and unlocking the data for all. Uh, we have been, uh, uh, we have heard about uh, 
uh, IoT data coming from wearables and so on. Uh, but um, uh, we really believe uh, that uh, providing uh, uh, EHR vendors, uh, hospital institutions, uh, and uh, in the end, uh, uh, the, the direct patients uh, with uh, the power of uh, uh, clinical, trustworthy data, uh, all uh, systematized uh, in a common uh, clinical semantics open model, uh, will be critical to enable uh, the trust of patients, providers, and hospitals towards this model and become really a driver for digital transformation, uh, hoping that uh, the, co the current COVID pandemic uh, uh, is not the only driver for digital transformation, as we've seen uh, in many countries uh, uh, in the last weeks and months. That's great, David. Um, next question um, is really, really about supplier side cooperation. Um, what kind of pragmatic cooperation has been made between different open EHR vendors, of which there's um, uh, many more um, coming through, which is very pleasing, um, in a shared region um, um, regarding, for example, archetype modeling? What are the results and the findings? So um, who'd like to pick up on that one? Yeah, I'm, I'm the co-chair for industry so <laughs> at the open air, so I think uh, I have a, a good overview of how that's done. So I would say two things. The first thing is once you get over the fact that you go vendor neutral, that it's not your data model, this cooperation, of course, it becomes much easier because you actually benefit from the work of others. I'll give you an example. So when COVID struck, the Chinese started modeling very early because they were hit first. These models were then translated into Norwegian, uh, German, Italian as the pandemic moved. So by the time the, it hit the UK, uh, Somerset as a trust already had models available so they could build. So it's actually happening by itself. There is no um, requirement that you have to use the same models, but it makes a lot of sense. I don't have time to explain how you can actually have a different view on the same models and still keep storing data in the same way. That's a technical aspect of open air, but it can be done. So you can specialize to your own needs while still storing in a common format. And that's the whole purpose of open EHR. That's, um, that's great. Um, in terms then of kind of um, sort of final question that kind of close on um, this um, Q&A session, how do you think um, COVID-19 may have changed perceptions of um, working on open architectures, open EHR, and, and that need for kind of wider collaboration at the national, regional, and international kind of levels? Um, Thomas, um, perhaps you could answer that one first. Yeah, so uh, it's, it's quite obvious that uh, this is now front and center. And if you think about COVID, there's nothing a trust can do. It's always a regional population-based uh, effort. So I think it's quite clear that unless we put this data together, we won't be able to figure out what's going on and how to treat these patients. And there's a big national system which will be presented in the afternoon in Germany where it's, uh, it's based on open EHR and it will be the COVID re national registry. So it's quite clear that, uh, you know, all this uh, uh, fighting between vendors go out, goes out the window when you have a pandemic that is uh, imminent and, and really scary. And just to bring a few others um, in, uh, just very briefly, we're nearly out of time. James and, and Michael, um, just same, same question to you about um, how COVID has changed that um, collaboration um, and perceptions about the need for open. So, so uh, yeah, I think that the, 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 the challenge has been there that's existed for quite a while and it's been heightened by the need for data, you know, high quality data, which is transparently given and which is readily available. Um, I, I think that has once again been highlighted by COVID. So, um, you know, for, we've certainly uh, seen an increased request for uh, data sharing, uh, both from our partners, from our clients um, and that, that will not now drop, you know, it's only going to continue to increase. And we've That's I've seen con, con, uh, our partner organisations, other companies we work with, very open about working to share data. So there's it, definitely working between businesses. It, it hasn't been a sense of can't share. Yeah, so I would say that, you know, COVID has really made us think about data first and application second, which is what we've been saying all along. That's fantastic. Um, I think we're right up against time. Um, so what I'm gonna do is thank uh, James, Michael, Thomas, uh, Marco, Carla, um, and David. Thanks for your presentations, all of which will be made available um, to everyone to follow. Um, 
We are just coming up to the um, second um, networking break. Um, during the break, as well as making yourself a quick cup of coffee, grabbing a bite to eat, it has to be said, Thomas, um, your um, your um, tapas picture maybe kind of quite peckish actually. Yeah? Um, that um, I'd also encourage you to go and take part in the activity feed and get tweeting, folks. The hashtag is um, Open EHR Digital. Um, tell people about what's being talked about. Um, encourage people to kind of join for afternoon sessions. Uh, we had almost 500 people join the first session this morning, so it's proving extremely kind of popular. 10-minute break. Um, rejoin us for session three. We got some great presentations coming up um, from the UK, um, from a whole range of different ways that um, open um, EHR is being used. Um, thanks once again to our panel. Um, go away. Come back shortly in 10 minutes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.